This is Arts Alive. I'm Linda Philippi. My guest is Jessie Rich. She's the education coordinator at the Chehalem Cultural Center. So welcome. Thank you, Linda. <laughs> it's nice that you could be here today. I know. Thank you. Following on the heels of Caleb. Yes. <laughs> so now you are relatively new to the position there. At yes, the I am. Okay. And you also teach part-time at George Fox? I do, yeah. That's so cool. No, it's a fun interchange of jobs. I like it a lot. Yeah, so you get to break your day up a little bit. Little kids, big kids. I do. Strangely the same language between the two sometimes. I, <laughs> yeah, <I'm> sure. <laughs> and now, it, are you responsible for all of the um, the actual programming of the education? Do you create the classes? It depends. My favorite idea of the job is that people come to me with ideas for teaching classes, especially older artists. I really love getting artists to come and not only teach with adults, but who are willing to work with the kids as well. So mm -hmm. I'm in charge of helping them find a space in the cultural center as well as finding teachers to teach the young kids who are just kind of getting a chance to experience art as opposed to learning how to paint brush strokes just to get a play in the paint and get a feel mm -hmm. of what it looks like to create something. So this must be, I mean, I would assume your big busy season with summer. Yes, coming up to summer is our summer camp, which is okay. huge and really, really wonderful. And actually ties in really well with the focus culture we have right now, which is Grand Ronde. They focus a lot on stewardship and reusing elements around them. So we're doing a lot of reclaimed art this summer with our oh, camp. So okay. the theme is discover art. And so my hope is that we find art in everything. So each week has a different theme. The first week is art in the everyday. So we're literally going to find your sock and how can you make a piece of art out of your sock. And a sock monkey. Exactly. <laughs> or some kids like cut it apart and they like weave it again and they make cordage, which is rope out of the sock, which blew my head when I saw a kid do that. I was like, now I want to do that. Yeah. Um, and then the next week is art in ourselves. And so they find how they can be a walking piece of art. In our spring break camp, we had them look at their hands and they would trace a constellation they saw on their hand. And then we did relief work with glass so that when they left, they had a glass piece that was like a handprint of who they are and how they're a piece of art. Oh, they, I love it. Okay. I know, right? And they did this really, a lot of the kids thought it was kind of gross, but it was really cool where they got to see their DNA. So they did this like swishing with salt water in their mouth. They spit in a cup and we pulled their DNA out so they could see the strands. And how do you do that? It's really cool. You scrape your cheek a little bit okay. and then you swish like Gatorade and you spit it into a little colander. You put a little rubbing alcohol and then the DNA actually comes out in this like white film. And it was, oh, some girls were like, this is it. We're done. This is really gross. But you can pull it out and you see these big long strands. And so they got to draw what the strands would look like if they can imagine what makes up their DNA. So is it their love of football or is it their love of being oh, outside? Okay. But first they got to see like actual DNA okay. and how even like on the basic level we're art. Well, you know, you always see on the, like the police thing where they're like we need a swab <laughs> but then I always think so now what <laughs> exactly <laughs> you know, but See, they have a lot more science than we do in ours we're like science and then art <laughs> okay but well, yeah we get to play with Gatorade and pull stuff out of cups yes which is super fun so now do the do the summer camps run all summer they run all of July so July 6th to the July 30th and mm -hmm. it runs every week Monday through Friday and, and a different focus each week so a kid could in theory go to all the camps exactly yes okay and therefore ages what to what Ages as young as four for half a day and as old as fifth for the full day. So half day meets from nine to 12 and we do a lot more smaller hands-on stuff for the younger kids and then the older kids have um, all the way till three and they get to do a bit more bigger projects. Like through age 11 or something like that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. And then if the if kids are older, like middle school, high school, what do you offer for them in the summer? In August, the second full week of August is another camp called Art Explosion and that gets a bit more in depth. So there's always like wheel throwing and I think we're going to have like encaustic painting this year. And so, oh. yeah, they get a little bit more hardcore wow. as they get older. So. Hot wax. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> they have fun with that one. I can imagine. Okay. Yeah. And then do your do your adult classes run all summer long as well? They take a little bit of a pause. Our mm -hmm. ceramics run through most of the summer and then we have a really fantastic program this summer um, with Gary Bueller. He's a watercolor artist in yes, Newburgh. Yes. And he's going to do some like wine landscape stuff, which oh, will be really he? great with plain air watercolor. Okay. And so. And that's for people who are beginners to good? Yes. All across okay. the board. He's open to students of any age. Okay. And that's what's great about the adult programs is any age, any skill level really mm -hmm. is welcome in. So I joined some of the classes myself and I have very little skill with like the glass work I did in it. It worked out really well. So yeah, the summer takes a bit of a pause for them and then they pick up again in September. Okay, so now like for June, what goes on in June? Right now we're sort of kind of gearing towards wrapping up um, of our regular programming, mm -hmm. but with the We Are Grand Ronde group we have in, we're having teachers from Chichalda Museum come teach. So we have a traditional life waste class that's gonna run in June and they're gonna learn um, pig natural pigment painting, some cordage, basket weaving, and dentalian makeup, uh, not makeup, jewelry making. Do you know what dentalium is? Mm -hmm. It's this really um, like hollow shell that grows in the 
right off the coast and it's really rare and it's really important to their history is that was their use of money and kind of showed like a level of status in the tribe mm -hmm. and so we're going to make jewelry from that tantalium now oh it's really right. fun it's yeah. a really fantastic program so most of these classes I, I, i'm assuming are like a day-long workshop that sort of thing yeah so okay. like that one the lifeways one will meet every, every week i think it's a tuesday night and it will go for two hours and run for a month Okay. And then there's a quarters workshop that's just like a two-hour workshop on a Saturday, and I think that's also at the end of June. Wow, that must be, have been kind of fun to sort of work with the people and develop these. It's very fun. It's very fun to see all the stuff, because you see the exhibits and you see some of the relics from thousands of years ago, and then you get to see like the process of making it and how long and complicated it actually was. A lot of the materials they work with in basket weaving, they had to start prepping it two years in advance of making the actual basket. So they'd pick it, it'd have to rest for a year, then like with hazel they'd strip it, and then it'd rest for another year, and then finally they could make a basket out of it. So the classes really get involved with understanding exactly how hard it was to make something and why when you made it, you made it once and you made it to last. You know, this is interesting. I think when I was a kid, I, I don't remember where this was, like maybe Mount Lassen or something. I mean, I'm from California, but I remember that we went to a park and there was an really old lady, Native American lady. I mm -hmm. mean, she was clearly, I think she was like maybe in her late 90s. Then this would have been like in the 60s. Yeah. So this is, she was went way back. And she was making like a pine needle basket and she was doing a oh, demonstration. Wow. Yeah. Like the, you know, like the pine needles, you know, the ones that are like about this long. Mm -hmm. and just But doing the weaving and I thought, I mean, I remember being, you know, like eight years old thinking I could never do that. That's exactly. just so incredible. And they made them, they were woven so tight that they could, they could literally boil water in them. Exactly, which is what's so impressive is the access they didn't have. Like, we have glues, we use all these yeah. kind of sealants, and they just had to know how to weave something so tight you could carry water or which root could soak and not, like, yeah. per per permeate the water. So mm -hmm. I wouldn't poison you. Exactly, which, yeah. you know, is important to have. Exactly. <laughs> wow. That's just, I mean, so this is really going to be a great sort of hands-on summer in a lot of different ways. Yeah, and especially with the kids' summer camps is for each week, not only do we have the different themes of discovering art, but we want to tie in the exhibit we have so that they get a chance to experience. So we'll have some basket stuff, some quarter stuff, and we'll work with the kids on understanding that part of sustainability in reclaiming material is understanding what the cost and effect is. And so not only will they use their material, but one of the things that's really great about Grant Round is anytime they took something from nature, they would leave something behind. And so we're going to encourage these kids as not they a beer can, art. not a beer can, <laughs> not trash, but something nice in tribute mm -hmm. to like thank basically the environment for the sacrifice it gave. And so our kids are going to get the same chance to maybe leave a piece of their art behind, and we're going to put it places so other people can discover the art these kids have created from materials around oh, them. Oh, that's fun. Now for the kid, the older kids who go, you know, till three, do they bring a lunch with them, or do you provide a lunch? Yes, they have a lunch, and luckily we have a playground right outside our door. And this summer we have a splash pad as well. Oh, nice. So they have okay. plenty of access to outside, and so they'll eat their lunch, hang out for a little bit, and come back, and they get sort of an open studio in the afternoon where if there's projects they haven't finished or something they're really engaged with, we can kind of give them a chance to explore on their own pace as well. Okay. Um, are your class, are the summer classes all full? No. Sprint, summer camp is still open. It's Actually, I think all four weeks are still open. So. Oh, good. Okay. Yeah, if you so go online, you can register. We perfect. still have scholarships available as well. Really? That's great. Yeah. So this is a good opportunity to publicize some of that. This is. And we have an early bird special that I think goes off at the end of this week. So May 15th. So two days. You get a 10% discount if you register for summer camp in the next two days. So That's great. So maybe time. <laughs> yeah. And then, then that all wraps up. August, everything's finished. You take a little break, I'm assuming, yes. and pick it back up again in September when school starts again. Yes. So September, all the regular classes will pick up, and we have some new classes that are coming this year as well that we've not had before. So. And do you do after-school programs for kids throughout the school year? Mm -hmm. So we have some that run for the younger kids, like starting at 1, and then most of our classes pick up around 3.30 or 4. Mm -hmm. And yeah, it ranges from wheel throwing to we have a mariachi practice that happens there. Oh, it's how fun. All kinds of things. We have cartooning classes. There's a cartooning class going on right now that... They just, it's really fun to get to explore the different aspects of art. It's not as simple as drawing or painting. It's how can you find art everywhere. So, and you probably, because there's so many artists, you probably don't have trouble finding people to teach these classes. No, but I always love to hear from more people. I love, especially whenever we have artists come through the gallery, when we have their shows up. We had a show not too long ago that we had someone who did paper mache sculpture making, and it was the most amazing oh, thing yeah. I've ever seen. And we convinced him to come do a class for us, and it was Fantastic, and it's an art form that you don't think about. Like when I think paper mache, I think like second grade making a little face mask. Yeah, the, like the pig 
thing exactly. over the balloon, right? Yeah. Make, yeah. Yeah, that's what I thought. And he makes these like gorgeous birds and women and all this kind of stuff that it's, it looks like marble by the time he's done. And so wow. getting to play with stuff like that, which is why it's fun to have kids in, is they can see little things they make and how they can make it even better. And just get to play. A kid getting dirty with paint is the best thing I've ever seen. Oh, so <laughs> yeah, that's wonderful. Yeah, it's oh, really great. Adults can, now, since you're a writer, do mm -hmm. you do any writing workshops at all? I do with the middle schoolers. I have a creative writing group. I have a few girls who have come several times to the class, and they're getting so good. They're going to teach it themselves soon. But we have writing classes for kids. We have poetry classes for adults. Um, probably a po uh, fiction writing for the adults in this coming fall as well. Really? So. That'll be interesting. Yeah, it'll be fun. We try and explore art in all of its forms because it is everywhere, and people are constantly creating new forms that I've never imagined. There's stuff they do with printmaking now that's never imagined seeing done so well so now jesse talk a little bit about you and, and your background you said you were in scotland for a couple of years yeah i did my master's in scotland at the university of st andrews and so i have my master's in creative writing which was awesome and for me it was kind of great to get a chance to explore what i love and what i'm passionate about which is the written word that's how i see art for myself but yeah so my background is that i also come from a long history of doing summer camps and counseling with art camps with kids so do you mm -hmm. yeah i started counseling when i was 14 and so I have, I'm not that old, but I have about 13 years now of background in that. So I love so you, working with kids. You've that. worn a lot of t-shirts and whistles. Yes, a lot of t-shirts, a lot of whistles, a lot of tie-dye, a lot of scraped <laughs> knees. <laughs> but especially on the Oregon coast, um, I love the idea of having kids find things in nature too that are already works of art. Mm -hmm. We would take them on tide pools adventures and they'd find old shells and they'd like create little notes to send out to the ocean. They could watch the tide wash it away and it was just... It's a great way to develop that sense of understanding how beauty is around us all the time. So here you are, like you started when you were 14 as mm -hmm. camp counselor and doing all that. And then you go to college and then you go to Scotland and then you come back and you're like, Mom, guess what? I got a job. I'm a, <laughs> I'm an art education coordinator. It's perfect. <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh. You know? <laughs> and then next question, what does that mean? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> But no, that's what's so great is I love helping people find kind of their venue of expressing how wonderful they are. Because artists are amazing creatures, but sometimes it's hard to get them to understand how to get out there and find people to connect with. And teaching is the best way. Yes, I, I seriously know that's true because I just spent a, you know, a, a whole day visiting with artists and saying, wouldn't you know, I'd love to come. To, oh, I'm so shy. I'm so introverted. And I mean, that's part of you know who many artists are is they're exactly. introverted people and they see the world they'd like to hide behind the curtain and watch and then go back and make something incredibly fabulous that i could never do <laughs> what i want to exactly. say is yes so come and put yourself in the chair and let's just chat about that for a few minutes <laughs> which is so good because they open up so much because you find something they just love and they're so passionate about that's and exactly right yeah it gives them that space to open up and it gives you a chance too to see the process happen because there's something so amazing to watch someone just create something out of it's nothing, really true essentially i think that's that's why you know studio tours are important and mm -hmm. you know taking classes and just for people to especially kids but adults as well just to see you know when you say artist it's not this magical mythical person it's really the guy in front of you at the grocery store you absolutely know? and you can do this too because we all have it in us everybody's creative it's just the way that you want to express yourself exactly and there's the idea too that people think artists are born and they forget it's just like playing an instrument you're not born with a skill you have to practice it you don't know how to draw you learn how to draw and so anyone can become an artist you just have to put out there and try you know <laughs> seriously I, I i'm so glad that you came today this has been absolutely <laughs> wonderful i can't wait to talk to you again this is perfect. the first time i've ever met you yeah no, this, this is, is great so, it's, it's perfect thank you very much jesse thank you for having me